Hi, welcome to this demo. My name is Anuraj. I am an engineer in technologist with Dell. In this demo, we are going to configure the data replication using the PowerScale SmartSync. SmartSync is a new feature released with the PowerScale 1 of us 9.4 and the SmartSync is designed to address the growing need of data mobility across data center and to cloud platforms like the AWS or Azure. It also supports the Dell ECS appliance and the SmartSync also combines the file and object targets into same replication technology. So now we can replicate from a file source to a file target across two post scale clusters or from a file source to an object target to an S3 bucket in AWS or an ECS appliance or to an Azure cloud platform. SmartSync also has the ability to configure the data replication by using pull or push policies. This gives us more flexibility to control the post scale cluster resource utilization. So let's go through the SmartSync configuration workflow. Here we are going to configure a file to file push data replication policy. So first we should make sure the required licenses are enabled. The SmartSync requires the snapshot IQ and the sync IQ license. Then we need to configure the certificate for the SmartSync service. SmartSync service requires a trusted root CA certificate and the identity certificate for the SmartSync service. Once the certificate is configured, we can enable the SmartSync service. Then we should configure the SmartSync accounts. SmartSync accounts are the configuration details about a remote target. So depending on a remote target, there will be two different kinds of accounts that we can configure. If our target is a file target, we'll configure a data more account. If our target is an object storage, then we'll configure a cloud SmartSync account. Next, we'll configure the data set creation policy. Once the data set creation policy is completed, we can create the copy or repeat copy policy depending on our configuration. If you want to do an incremental copy, then we'll configure a repeat copy or if it's a one-time data copy, we can create a copy data policy. Then the expression policy is configured to clean up the expired data sets. Here we have two power scale cluster, PS01 and PS02. And the PS01 is going to be used as our source power scale cluster and PS02 is going to be used as our target power scale cluster. And we are going to configure the push file to file data replication from PS01 to PS02. Let's verify the licenses in our source power scale cluster. And we can see our snapshot IQ and sync IQ licenses are enabled. Now we can verify the smart sync certificates. And we can see the CA certificate or identity certificates are not yet configured. The certificates required by the smart sync service are already created by using an enterprise CA and certificates are copied into the power scale cluster. Now we can create the certificate by using these files. So first let's create the CA certificate and then we can configure the identity certificate for the smart sync service. Now both the CA certificate and the identity certificate is successfully configured. Now we can go ahead and enable the smart sync service. Now we'll go to the target power scale array and verify the licenses. Also let's verify the certificates in this target cluster. And now we can see the CA certificate and or the identity certificate is configured. So we already generated the required certificate and moved it into this power scale cluster. And we can see the ps02.crt and ps02.key files here. Now let's create the CA certificate by using the root certificate. Then we'll create the identity certificate by using the ps02.crt file and ps02.key file. Now verify the certificates. As we have successfully configured the certificate for the smart sync services, now we can go ahead and enable the smart sync service in this target power scale cluster. Verify the network access pools configured in this power scale cluster. So we can see there is two different pools configured. One is AC01 hyphen pool 01 and another one is system hyphen pool 01. And also we can see there is two different access zones configured, system access zone and the AC01 access zone. The system access zone is used for management purpose and the AC01 is used for the data access. And the network pool AC01 hyphen pool 01 is used by the access zone AC01. So we'll be using the access zone AC01 as the destination for the data replication. So we'll use the ps02-ac01.vda.xtreme.io as our 
endpoint to connect to this power scale array. Let's go to our source power scale cluster and verify the network pools here also. Similar to our target power scale array, the source power scale array also have two different network pools configured. And also we can see there is two access zones configured, the system access zone and the access zone AC01. Now let's list the smart sync accounts in the source power scale array. By default there will be one local DM account configured. Now we can configure the smart sync account for our remote power scale array. And we provide the account type as DM and the URI of the remote power scale array. Also we can provide the local and remote network pools to be used. Now we can see the smart sync account for the remote array is configured successfully. Now we can go to the remote array and we can configure the smart sync account for the source array. Here also we will select the account type as DM and we will provide the URI of our source power scale array. Also we should provide the local network pool and the remote network pool. The smart sync account in the target array is also successfully configured. Now we can verify the base path of the access on AC01 in the target power scale array and this is where we are targeting to copy the data from the source array and we can see this directory is empty. Now we'll go to the source power scale array and we'll create the data set creation policy and we can see here the policy type is creation and we are using the creation account id as the dm local account and we are providing the base path as our access or base path and the policy is scheduled to run hourly. So here we are planning to configure a repeat copy policy because we want to do an incremental sync of the same data set from the source to the target array in a scheduled manner. So we are going to create a policy type as repeat copy and we are providing the base account as our local DM account and the target account as the remote power scale account. We are also linking the data set creation policy as a parent policy into the data copy policy. Whenever a data set creation policy executes successfully, it will automatically trigger the data copy policy so that whenever a data set is created, the data copy policy will automatically copy the data set into the remote power scale array. Next, we will create the data set expiration policy to clean up all the expired data set. Now we can list all of our policies to make sure all the policies are created successfully. Now let's go to the base path of our data set. And we can see there is one directory over there. Let's create one more file over there. Now let's run our data set creation policy manually by setting the run now equal to true. So now let's verify the data set creation job. And we'll wait for some time for the data set creation job to complete. Now the job got completed successfully. And we can list all the historical job. The data set creation job got executed successfully. And after the successful completion of the data set creation job, the data copy job also completed successfully. Now we can go to our target power scale cluster and verify the base path. So now we can see the data got successfully copied over here. As we configure the repeat policy, we can do an incremental copy of the data set. So now we'll create a test file test file 2 to make an incremental change to the data set now we'll again run the data set creation policy so this will trigger the data set creation policy which got completed successfully then that will also automatically run a incremental data copy policy so we can see here after the data set creation policy an incremental data copy policy got run and that status of the incremental data copy policy is also successful so now we can go to the target power scale array and in the target power scale array we can see at the base path the test file 2 also got copied in. Now we successfully completed the file to file data copy between two power scale cluster using the smart sync. Next we can configure the data replication between a file to an object storage by using the smart sync. So for that I am using the target object storage is an S3 bucket from the object scale. Now let's create an S3 bucket in the object scale. Go to the buckets, select the namespace and the object store, then create a new bucket, provide a name for the bucket, then create the bucket. Now the S3 bucket is successfully created. Now I can create an user. 
so go to the accounts users a new user give a name for the user and we'll give the permission to the user so for this demo I'll give a three full access now download the secret file which has the access key and the secret key for this user now the user got created successfully now let's go to the source power scale array ps01 and create a smart sync cloud account now we'll select the account type as ecs underscore s3 and we'll give the s3 endpoint of the object scale also provide the access id and the secret key of the user now the smart sync cloud account for the object scale got created successfully and we can see the account id here also we can list the policy and we can see all of our previous policies are here now we can create a copy policy to copy the file to object from a power scale cluster to an s3 bucket in the object scale and we can see here the policy type is selected as copy because at this point in time file to object copy only support one time copy and the increment copy is not yet supported and the data set type is selected as file on object copy and the data copy policy got created successfully now we can list all of our policies here now we can list the historical jobs so now we can see that our copy job got completed successfully now we can go to our s3 bucket and verify the data so we can see all of our data got copied into the s3 bucket here this concludes this demo thank you for watching